going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and today is basically uh, introduction to reverse dieting. So we're starting week one of the reverse diet. We just finished our competition prep series, and now we're going to transition into the reverse diet. I feel like reverse dieting is one of the things that people need to know more about. I feel like there's a ton of confusion around the topic, so I'm very, very excited to dive into that and hopefully shed some light on the matter. This video is going to be a little bit longer because it's the week, the first week. I'm going to kind of go like an overview status here, give you all a little bit of formal guidelines, and also kind of give you some informal vlog type footage of what my reverse diet looks like personally. Um, so before we begin, let's just kind of start with a little overview as to what reverse dieting is and why you would want to do it and who would benefit from it. So when you do a contest prep, when you take your calories from a very high starting point to a very low starting point, your body's metabolism is going to down-regulate. That is normal, that is natural, that is supposed to happen. You want that to happen because it indicates that your body is intelligent. It's doing what it's adapted and evolved to do. So you can't really beat the system there. What you can do is be strategic in how you fix and improve upon that going forward. So when you do down-regulate your metabolism, as you do during a contest prep, it's important to titrate your calories back up to reverse diet and ramp that metabolism back up, hopefully to a starting point that exceeds what it was before you ever started the contest prep to begin with. You don't have to just be an athlete that's done a contest prep to benefit from a reverse diet. I have so many clients that have just chronically under-eaten and I've transitioned them to a reverse diet and then we can ramp up their metabolism and they can be in a much better position to lose body fat in the future. And also build muscle tissue, which is hugely important as well. That's another way to, to increase your metabolism is to build lean muscle tissue, which you can do better when you're eating more calories, quality calories. You don't want to just ramp up calories all at once because that's kind of an unnecessary shock to the body. You need to titrate those calories up very gradually and very strategically. You can be a bit more aggressive with ramping them up than you were in titrating them down as you were during a contest prep. But you do need to be fairly gradual in your increase of those calories to minimize any unnecessary body fat gain. Also, after you finish a contest prep, your perception of satiety is totally skewed. You have a very flawed perception on what true hunger is, what true satiety is, and that can be dangerous. So having a strategic plan as to what you're going to need to consume going into reverse diet is very important. You can't just listen to your body per se. I know... It's very advocated to listen to your body, but when your body, uh, from a hormonal standpoint, leptin, ghrelin, from a psychological standpoint, is a little bit skewed because doing a contest prep is not a natural thing, then you can't really naturally listen to your body and expect to give it the right inputs as far as food is concerned. So it's, it's important to have a plan and a strategy with regard to the reverse diet. Now, there's been some mistakes made by many people, myself included, um, I'm speaking very passionately about this reverse diet because I've come from a point in my life where I did not do this properly. Um, after my first competition, I put on 20 pounds in less than 24 hours because I did not reverse diet properly. I just let myself eat like a fool, and it showed, and I, I developed eating disorders, and that is very, very common, especially in the sport of bodybuilding. So I feel like having a lot of emphasis on the reverse diet is incredibly important and should not be overlooked. Last time I did a ketogenic competition prep, I transitioned immediately to a 4,000 calorie surplus challenge, um, which Jason Whitrock put on initially, and then I followed suit and tried as well, and then I think many people have replicated since then. And the whole point of that was to see at such a caloric surplus how my body would respond, and honestly, I must say that it responded much better with that massive surplus coming from ketogenic foods than it did when it was coming from carbohydrate-based foods. However, I still don't necessarily recommend having such a massive bolus and increase of calories immediately post-show because, like I said, there's just so much skewed perception, both psychologically and physically. Your, your body just is not ready for that massive intake of food. So being strategic with that gradual increase is preferred and recommended. Now, the cool thing about a reverse diet is that if you do it properly, like I said earlier, you can actually reset your body's caloric baseline and metabolism to a point 
and a foundation higher and better than it was before you ever started the contest prep to begin with. So I've got a little graph here that I've showed at multiple conferences that I've presented on, and I want to kind of just take you to my computer and show you this so you can get a visual as to what this may look like if it's graphically displayed. All right, so here is what a cutting phase and building phase with the reverse that could visually represent. So as you can see here, that one third in deficit that represents what your metabolism is your is doing. It's tri tri trading down your calories are going down. That's what's visible in red. And your body fat is going down as well as visible in the green. That can basically be what is represented during the course of a competition prep. It's not going to be linear like that, but just for the illustrative purposes, you can see how metabolism is down regulating, your calories are going down, and your body fat's going down to the point where they reach that lowest um, valley, which is what you see with that line there. The next two thirds portion of this graph is what a maintenance including the reverse diet may look like. So you start increasing your calories, which are, is the red there. Again, that's a gradual increase in calories. In, in turn, your metabolism in blue starts also trending up there. And then your body fat starts to increase as well because you can't expect to, to stay at a very lean competition prep style body fat indefinitely. Like you, that's not sustainable. It's not healthy. You don't want to do that. You're not going to be in a primed position to build muscle if that is what you try and do. So it's reasonable to expect a slight gain in body fat when you do increase calories and metabolism. However, as you can see, when you get towards the end of this graph here, the calories bump up quite a bit. And then metabolism starts to kind of level off like you you increase calories but you do not see the resulting increase in metabolism as well that's a pretty good indicator that you've reached your caloric you know threshold like you don't need to go any higher in calories than that there's no benefit to it if your metabolism is not ramping up if you're not seeing any increased lean muscle tissue um, you're not seeing any benefit from that extra increase in calories that's a pretty good indicator that you've reached your caloric threshold your metabolic threshold at that point, you can start leveling off calories. That's also the point at which your body fat is probably going to be at its peak as well um, as it relates to this reverse diet, not body fat peaking in its totality, but just as it relates to the benefits associated with the increase in calories and metabolism, that's where your body fat is going to start to, to jump up and then you can start leveling things out because you will have known that you've reached your threshold at that point. That is what this might look like in the course of, you know, several several months but this gives you a visual as to kind of what we're working with from a high level view here now as is true with the competition prep you want to do your best to document the reverse diet journey as well you want to be on top of what your nutrition is you want to be on top of what your composition is doing what your pictures measurements body fat is looking like so i took uh pictures measurements and caliper body fat test the monday after my show so on Monday, again, this is after those two days of a lot of calories, that Saturday and Sunday. Um, but on Monday, I weighed 167.2 pounds. So very, very minimal increase above what I was weighing on the show day that I had peaked for. So that's a good thing. That's that's the benefit of doing it from a ketogenic pers perspective and not going off the rails and eating a ton of crap after your show. You don't have to have that massive increase in body weight. So 167.2 pounds, according to the caliper test, I was 5.37%, which is pretty good. Um, my neck was measured at 15, shoulders 47.25, chest 41.75, arms 14.25, flexed, they were 16.25, waist 32, hips 37, thighs 23, and calves 15 and a half. So I'll be able to look back at these measurements in a couple weeks, I'm going to, I'm going to take these every two weeks, just the same as I did with the contest prep, but I'll be able to look back and see these and kind of use this as a way to, to make sure that I'm not gaining too much unnecessary weight or body fat too quickly. So if I need to titrate the calorie increase down a little bit, I can. As far as calories go, actually, before we dive into calories, let's just look, let's look at some updated posing footage. So this footage is footage that I took that same Monday, again, that's only two days after the show. Let's dive into that. So, as you can see, I got a little color on still from the show. Vascularity is still popping. I've got a little bit more of a 
bloated gut again just from all that food that's kind of to be expected I'm not really worried about that but as you can see i'm still looking pretty freaking tight vascularity is still there as i go through the symmetry rounds um i'm going to the most muscular or the muscular rounds here again you can see a lot of depth and definition in the quads in the separation of the different parts of the legs um in the biceps the triceps you can see with the side chest here, the hamstrings are coming off. Um, I got the striations in my chest. I got the horseshoe in my triceps. Everything's still popping. Again, you can see a bit more bloat in the midsection due to the increase in just total volume of the food that I ate that weekend. But this is not a sloppy look by any means. If I had just totally gone off the rails and binged on a bunch of carbs and crap foods, heavily processed foods, I would not be able to bring this kind of physique to 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 light here this this would not be possible um i still have all the the vascularity in my arms i still have the I still have striations all on my glutes um you you should really be able to see that here when i hit this abdominal thigh pose but obliques are still popping i mean honestly my my legs look i think a little better i think there's even more depth and separation in the muscle um but then going to the most muscular here still looking on point so I want to touch a little bit on the training and cardio aspect of it because a lot of people want to train, change the training and cardio as they go into the reverse diet. There's no need to do that. You want to remove as many variables as possible. A lot of people start titrating their cardio back a little bit, which is totally fine. You don't want to just drop off of cardio. I would probably keep your training pretty much the same. Going back to a traditional training, not the peak week style training, if you can remember back to the contest prep series, we titrated the intensity down quite a bit during peak week. You don't need to do that, especially that you're eating more calories and you have the refeeds. So just going back to a normal training cycle like you were doing throughout the entirety of your contest prep other than peak week. That's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I recommend you do. It's going to be kind of cool to see your strength start to improve and you bust through some of these plateaus that you were starting to hit during the latter part of your contest prep. Now that you're increasing your calories. So that's a good thing. It's something to be excited about. For me personally... Um, the, the cardio, I'm going to keep pretty consistent. The Stairmasters are still inaccessible due to the virus. Uh, however, the, the trails that I run, the roads that I run, those are still wide open. So I'm going to continue to run my 1.3 to 2 miles every single day simply because I enjoy it. It gives me something to, to, it gives me time to relax, gives me time to think and reflect. And I enjoy it. It keeps me physically fit and cardiovascularly healthy. So I'm going to continue doing that. You don't have to, but if you do decide to decrease cardio, I would decrease cardio gradually. Maybe tapering off one session a week or dropping off, you know, five to ten minutes of your session, depending on what form of cardio you're, you are doing each week. All right, so let's talk about the most important aspect of the reverse diet with regard to manipulations you will make, and that is the macronutrient manipulation. So Again, you don't want to do a massive increase in calories. You can have those two days immediately post-show to have a little bit more food, enjoy yourself, relax, let loose a little bit, but get back on plan. The important thing is with anything in life is to have a plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, and that could not be more true than with the reverse diet. I see so many people just get sloppy, and it really, really shows. So take some time and be strategic. What I would recommend doing with the reverse diet is keep the refeeds in place. As the weekly calories start to increase, you can start to decrease the refeed calories. So let me say that again. As the weekly calories increase, you can start to decrease the refeed calories until they more or less meet in the middle. And at that point, you can phase them out entirely because you'll be consuming enough daily on a weekly basis uh, to not really need the refeeds. However, while your calories are still low and you are having these refeeds, I would enjoy the refeeds. Like have a plan with them, but enjoy them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pretty conservative with my weekly increase in calories. I'm going to be increasing by about 5%, which is going to be about 100 calories, 110 calories a week for me. Just kind of give you an idea, uh, this first week of the refeed, I am, actually, let me back up a little bit. One change that I would make pretty much right off the bat is increasing protein to lean mass. So that is one, not necessarily aggressive, but that is a bit more aggressive than what I just said. So what I would do is since protein was low during the last 
couple weeks of the contest prep, I would go ahead and bump protein up uh, to about equal a one-to-one ratio of what your lean mass is. So right now, my lean mass is probably around 150, 155. I'm going to be consuming 150 grams of protein during week one of this reverse diet. And I would recommend you bump that up as well. There's no need to worry about having protein low during the tail end of a contest prep. But when the competitions are over and you are reverse dieting, you might as well just hedge your bets there and make sure you're consuming enough protein to not have an adverse effect. So I would go ahead and bump protein up to about a one-to-one. Now that that is bumped up and I'm consuming 150 grams of protein a day, I'm going to be doing the 5% increase a week on total calories. That's going to be, like I said, about 100, 110 calories each week. And that's going to be equally distributed between the proteins and the fats for the most part. I'll be increasing protein by about 5 or 10 grams. I'll be increasing fat by about 5 or 10 grams. During week one of this reverse diet, that's going to break down to about 2,047 calories. Total fat will be about 150 grams. Total carbs will be about 15 total grams of carbohydrates. And protein will be about 150 grams. Which for me, that is 66.6% of my calories coming from fat. As I go, I'll probably be a little bit more aggressive with the fat increase over the protein since I'll already be consuming about a one-to-one of protein to lean mass. I'm going to benefit more from the increase in fat because where I'm getting my energy from. So I'll probably be a little bit more aggressive with increasing fat than protein now that I am eating, like I said, enough protein, adequate protein. But that's what I'm doing with regard to the macro manipulations there. Each week, like I said, I'll be increasing that by about 5%. And then with regard to the two-day consecutive refeeds, I want to talk about this because this is something that I feel like makes reverse dieting much more sustainable, much more enjoyable, and much more fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to meal prep six days worth of food based off of those macros that I just gave you. Five days out of the week, I'm going to hit those macros to the T. Exactly, no questions asked, no slippage, no shade of gray. I'm going to hit those, and I'm going to be consistent with those, just like I was consistent during the contest prep. However, two of those days a week, I'm going to have a refeed. One day is going to be consuming those that prepped meal, and then also I'm going to take Crystal out on a date, and I'm going to enjoy some type of food, at a restaurant, whatever I'm craving. I'm not really going to put too much thought into what those macros are breaking down to or tracking because I will know that I've hit at least my minimum daily intake for the day based off of those protein and fat goals with that prepped meal. So I'll have that prepped meal, and then I'll go out to eat, and I'll have a lot of food that day. Like, I'll eat quite a bit. I might eat even you know, double my calories. I might have 5,000, even 6,000 calories that day. That's going to do a couple things. It's going to ensure that I hedge my bets and cover all my caloric requirements, obviously. It's also going to satisfy my psychological, it's also going to satisfy my psychological craving for food, volume, texture, bulk, and just, you know, flavor. Like I've been deprived of that for so many weeks. You want to be able to to answer that need, but you don't want to be able to have no no restrictions on that or else you'll go crazy. So having that one day where I go out to eat, have the meal prepped beforehand, eat that, and then go out to eat and enjoy that food and not really have to worry about the macros is going to be key. Plus, as a secondary, it'll be good for my relationship with my wife. It'll help me have some some distance from the prepped meals. It'll give me some some new scenery, some new atmosphere and it'll just be good overall the second consecutive refeed day is going to be very accurate macros that i will have you know found in my that i will have calculated for myself and the food is going to be different from the prepped meal that i have throughout the week but it will hit those macros exactly as well so it's going to be a strategic increase in calories um, proteins and fats but it's going to be a very accurate refeed meal. It's not going to be uh, just whatever I want off the wall. It's going to be something that I prepare at home that I'm craving and that I desire, but it's going to be something that hits the macro goals that I have to the T. It will probably not be, it definitely will not be as many calories as I have on the day where I do go out to eat, but it will be an increase in calories from what I'm consuming on the day-to-day basis during that week. 
All right, so I know this video is getting a little bit longer. I really want to just finish off this portion of the reverse diet series week one with a little bit of a touch on mindset. I know I've talked about mindset a lot in these videos lately, but it's just it's it's crazy how important the mindset aspect is. So as I said earlier in this video, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That could not be more true than it is the reverse dieting. Just the other day, I found myself, and I've gone through a lot of contest prep, but I found myself opening up all the cupboards in the kitchen and the fridge multiple times looking for foods I could just snack on on the day that I, it was my snacking day. And then I caught myself and I'm like, what am I doing? I don't need to do this. And you don't need to do this. Recognize that it is just food. Even the most professional of athletes, even the people that have done this the most times, had the most experience, it's still a mental hurdle. It is a mental challenge. It is weird that food can have such a hold on us, but it can. So know that going into it, plan accordingly, and don't let yourself become a slave to the food. Have a structured reverse diet plan. Stick to it and don't waver from that. Because if you waver from that, it's going to be so much easier to waver from it a second time, a third time, every single day. That's why I've built in this five days a week where I hit the macros to the T. On the sixth day, I hit the macros to the T, but it's with an increase in calories and it's with a different group of food. On the seventh day, I hit a meal that I've prepped, but then I also got to eat and I don't track those macros. I eat a lot more food. I don't feel guilty about eating a lot more food, but it makes it that much easier to get right back on track the next day when it's time for me to do so. I feel really good about this plan. I, I know that it will work and I feel confident that you would benefit from it as well. So have a plan. Stick to it. Recognize that there is no finish line with a contest prep. A lot of people look at the contest as the finish line. Once they cross that, all bets are off. They just go off the rails. Do not do that. Have a plan. Have some structure. Stick to it. And take pride in knowing that you're doing something that most people, frankly, do not have the willpower and the discipline to do. So know that you do have that. Execute on that. And make the most of this period because this is the time where you can really build a lot of muscle. This is the time where you can really focus in on what's important in life. This is the time where you can really dial in what you're capable of. So don't treat the reverse diet flippantly. Treat it with the respect it deserves and make the most of it. And as I've got to say about week one of the reverse diet. I'm going to th throw in some of this vlog footage after this. This is basically just what my two refeed meals this week in week one look like you don't necessarily need to see this because this is going to be different for you but a lot of people benefit from just kind of having some perspective as to what a typical refeed may look like so this is what my two days were um yeah enjoy this vlog footage and i will see you next week for week two of the reverse diet all right y'all so to give you a visual what my meal looks like for week one of the reverse diet and again this is a refeed day here so I'm going to have this meal, plus we're going to go out to dinner tonight for our date. But let me show you what I got here. So we've got the peanut butter keto brick. We have the beef collagen gummies. We have a can of smoked baby clams. And we have the mix here. This is what this all breaks down to. We have the morning drink with the, the, the Nut Pods Original Cream, the heavy cream. And then that's what we have going on there. Totals break down to 151 fat, 20 grams total carbs, and 151 total protein. 66% of the calories coming from fat. So, bada bing, bada boom. Alright y'all, so we can't go out to eat because all the places are curbside only. So, we went on a little date right now. We're at the Big Orange, which is a burger joint. We're in the old truck, which is where we took our original dates. We're going to order some burgers, we're going to sit on tailgate, and we're going to enjoy these curbside burgers, and this will be the refeed for the week, so I'm excited about it. Let's make an order. Sir, calling Big Orange West, this is Carmen, can I help you? Hey, Carmen, can I place an order to go? Yeah, what's the name of your order? Robert. Alright, and we are doing curbside to go, what kind of vehicle are you driving? A white Dodge Ram, I'm parked at the in front of the Victoria's Secret, but I'm here for burgers and not bras. All right, y'all, just placed our to-go order. We're sitting here on the tailgate right now, waiting. This is like normally a popping part of town. It's just deserted, no man's land right now. So, we're sitting here on tailgate, waiting on our burgers. We got our Topo Chico's. 
Topo right there. Crystal's Topo. Super excited for these burgers. You excited, baby? Yes, I'm so excited. Okay. What do we got? Number one, we have... This one looks like the Reaper. This is either mine or Robert's. I didn't get stuff, so it's probably yours. What? Oh, yeah, but there's no bacon on it. But well, this one has bacon. Mm. That one's good. We have the um, Farmer's Burger. Yeah, that one's got eggs. This one is the Farmer's, Farmer's Burger. Burger. This is Robert's. Nice. I'm digging it. Also, super awesome thing about this place is that they um, get all of their stuff locally. So like the eggs are local, the bacon's local, the meat's local. I think that's pretty cool. That is cool. And this is the umami. Umami, all right. And this is the other reaper. I guess they just forgot bacon on mine. Yep. Sorry about your bacon. Boom. Excited? Mm-hmm. Good. All right, y'all, the burgers are done. They did not last long. I ate that in a heartbeat. I'm gonna finish it off with the new toasted almond coconut brick. Mm, mm, mm. That's the way to do it, repeat. Can I just add in there that Robert ate three burgers in the time that it took me to eat one? That's how quickly he's eating. <laughs> gotta love it all right y'all it's the next day I'm gonna show you what I've got going on with the meal today this is the second refeed day of the week but this is a refeed meal that I prepare at the house it's all measured out the the macros are on point I'm hitting everything exactly this is just an opportunity for me to be a little bit more creative and, and kind of satisfy some of the the tastes and textures that I've been craving throughout the week so let me show you what we got going on here we've got the morning drink which is the Nut Pods Original Heavy Cream. And then meal one, we've got a little nacho action going on. So pork rinds, we got shredded cheese, we got a keto brick, which I've got right there, the new toasted almond coconut. And then I'm doing 85-15 beef. And I'm also going to put some salsa on this as well. But this breaks down to... 200 or 2,663 calories, 222 fat, 18 total carbs, and 147 total protein. 75% of my calories are coming from fat. Boom. Check that out. That is a bowl of nachos right there. Pork rind nachos. And then the new toasted almond coconut keto brick, which just launched yesterday.